There's a new push in the state legislature to toughen Wisconsin's drunken driving laws, especially when it comes to repeat offenders and time served. Last week, lawmakers heard emotional testimony from a woman whose son was one of four Milwaukee area people killed in a wrong way crash on I-94 near Deerfield. Marla Hall's son, Clinton, was just 26 years old and her only child. The thought of me living the rest of my life without him is horrible. Police say the accused driver had a blood alcohol level more than twice the legal limit when he caused the crash. But under current law, he doesn't face any mandatory minimum prison sentence. Republican State Representative Jim Ott of Mequon is once again trying to change drunken driving laws, and he joins us now on Up Front. Representative, good to have you back on the program. Good to be with you, Mike. Thank you, you say you want the laws of this state to, to be more consistent with the seriousness of right. the offense. So what would your legislation do? Well, the one bill that we, uh, we heard on uh, uh, last Thursday uh, would put a mandatory minimum of five years in prison for somebody who commits homicide OWI. Homicide OWI, we are not talking about mitigating circumstances. We're talking about the drunk driver crosses the center line, hits an oncoming car head on, or uh, goes through a red light and broadsides an automobile. That would be homicide OWI. Right now, no mandatory minimum sentence for that offense. And, um, and we heard testimony on Thursday, and I've heard testimony in the past that sometimes people get as little as a year or two incarceration for, for killing someone, devastating family. I don't think that's, that's right. Are we different than other states? You know, it varies across the yeah. board as far as what other states do. And certainly the maximum penalty in Wisconsin can be as much as 25, up to 40 years, depending on the circumstances. So it's not a problem with the maximum penalty. And, and I think a lot of judges agree with me that five years is, is at least five years is reasonable because many times they sentence longer than five years. But it's these cases which come up all too often where the sentence is, is much smaller than five years. Another piece of legislation that you're, you're proposing is to increase the mandatory minimum sentences for people who are in their fifth or sixth drunken driving offense. Right. So that would go from six months to 18 months. That's correct. And again, the maximum for fifth and sixth offenses, it's a class G felony. You can get as much as 10 years in prison, but sometimes people get very light sentences. And I'm thinking somebody drives drunk, caught the fifth or the sixth time. Yeah, is, is six months in jail a sufficient deterrent to that kind of behavior? I think not. Uh, there was some testimony from Evan Goyke, a Democrat from Milwaukee, who raised questions about how much it might cost to incarcerate people, have them spend longer amounts of time in prison, those fifth and sixth offenders. Um, you, you were not... In necessarily impressed with his numbers, which he suggested it might be as much as $20 million to incarcerate Well, rep what Representative Glecky did is he took all the fifth and sixth convictions, I think it was from last year or the last two years, and he assumed that they all got six months in jail, and that now we're going to increase all of those to 18 months in prison. The problem with that, that reasoning is a lot of times fifth and sixth offenders get more than six months, and I have to go back and look at the statistics and see exactly what percentage get less than 18 months now, but the, the cost would be be much less than than what Representative Goyke came up with because you know if someone's getting 18 months or two years right now they won't be affected they would not have been affected by this bill because we're putting a floor of 18 months on so and the other thing is uh, these uh, these um, estimates that that always come out about the cost of tougher drunk driving bills they assume that there's not going to be any deterrent effect from making our penalties tougher and I believe that the statistics show that there there is a deterrent effect Let's talk a little bit about this, this notion of whether or not we're tough enough with first and second offense drunken drivers. We just had Representative Anderson on who had a, his own personal experience with a drunken driver, lost his family members in that. Uh, we also heard from people at the hearing, uh, the Jenkins family, who said we want the state to do more with first and second offense drunk drivers. What do you say about that? Well, uh, I did have a bill last session. We actually passed it in the assembly that would at least have first offenders have to make a mandatory appearance in court. Um, we passed that in the assembly. Unfortunately, the Senate did not pass that bill. Uh, that wouldn't have toughened the penalties, but I think certainly it would make an impression, more of an impression on a first offender because you, you stand before the judge. You can't just send in your fine or have your attorney appear. I'm not pursuing that bill again this time. I do think that will come up 
uh, in a future uh, session. Uh, the other thing is, you know, the debate goes on on whether to criminalize first defense or not, and, and I hear arguments on both sides of that, so we're not taking that on right now, but I do think that we have to look at the penalties for first and second offenders. The other thing that I'm looking at down the line, Mike, is I think third offense should be a felony in Wisconsin. Right now it's a criminal misdemeanor, and I think that would send a strong message to, uh, to someone that, you know, you, you offend once, then twice, next time it's a felony. I think that would have a deterrent effect. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, sort of some of the things that have happened in the last couple of years, uh, something that passes in the Assembly but doesn't pass in the Senate. How optimistic are you about the legislation you're proposing this time around actually becoming law? I'm, I'm actually very optimistic. The other bill that we have up is to close what's known as the ignition interlock loophole. It, it wouldn't change the law, but it would make the law enforceable, uh, more enforceable. Uh, last session, we did pass a bill, and we did get it through the Senate. The governor signed it into law. It became law on January 1st this year. Fourth offense, always a felony, no matter when it happens. Fifth offense and above, increase the felony level by one category and, and clean up a flaw in the statutes relative to causing injury while, while OWI, making it easier to prosecute that. We got that bill passed, uh, and it's law right now. And the, the thing that I was most pleased about is it was, it was very well publicized on January 1st that the laws are getting tougher in Wisconsin. And I think that's part of it, too, to get the message out there that we are taking drunk driving more seriously in Wisconsin. And, and I, am, I understand that addiction is involved when we're talking about chronic, repeat drunk drivers. And, and obviously a tougher law for drunk drivers is not necessarily going to make a person get the treatment that they need. I, I would hope that everyone who has an addiction problem seeks treatment and gets help because there's other reasons not to be addicted. Uh, but what I'm hoping is that at least maybe we can convince some people who chronically dr drive drunk that even if they're not going to deal with their addiction right here and now, don't get behind the wheel. Because there's no law against driving, there's no law against drinking to excess. You put the two together and it becomes a deadly combination. Representative Jim Ott, the Republican from Mequon, we appreciate your time. It's good to have you back on the program. Thank you, Mike. Good to be here. And some big economic news last week. A German candy company is coming to Kenosha County and creating 400 jobs in the process. The Haribo Company makes gummy bears. The company will build its first U.S. plant along I-94 in Pleasant Prairie. Governor Walker made the announcement and also touted the state's unemployment rate falling to 3.7 percent. We believe initially at least uh, 400 jobs, although uh, we believe that they'll continue to grow and prosper as their product continues to do well uh, here in this region. Haribo's gummy bear plant is expected to open in 2020. Coming up next, back to health care reform, why what it's called affects how people feel about it. And remember, you can keep the conversation going throughout the week by following me at Mike Goucher on Twitter.